I installed Windows 11, and here are the new features that make it different than 10. One of the more notable changes to features in Windows 11 is the complete redesign of the user interface. And as you can see, Microsoft has taken the Start menu and all the icons and centered them in the taskbar at the bottom. This makes it align better for widescreen monitors and is a little bit smoother in the transition to mobile devices. You'll also see when you go to the Start menu that the live tiles are missing and they've been replaced with pinned apps. Here you can see all of your common apps that you're using, or you can click the All Apps, and there's an alphabetical list of everything installed on your computer. You'll also see that the Power option is down here at the bottom where you can shut down and restart your computer. And there is a redesign of the windows so that they have rounded edges and a little bit different shading in the background. This is an attempt by Microsoft to give it a more pleasing interface, and I have to say, I'm actually impressed. I like it a lot. If you actually don't want the centered icons at the bottom, you can right click on the taskbar, go to taskbar settings, scroll down here, choose taskbar from the menu, and then pick taskbar behaviors. Here there's an option to center or left. So if you prefer the old format, you can change that to the left, but I personally like the center option. Another change is if you open any of the windows, you'll see in the upper right there's Minimize, Maximize, and Close, just like the old windows. But if you hover over Maximize, this gives you options called Snap Layouts. Here you can choose one, select other windows, and it creates a layout that snaps to that format. And there are multiple available Snap Layouts. Microsoft has also added additional themes. If you right click on the desktop, go to Personalize, then choose Themes from the menu. Here are a number of new themes available, including the ability to change from Windows Light to Windows Dark if you prefer the dark theme. You can also browse multiple themes from the website and download a number of free ones. So Microsoft's done a great job of giving you the ability to customize your desktop to your liking. You may have noticed the new icon on the taskbar called Widgets. Widgets brings back the live tiles that were removed from the Start menu, and they work very similar. If you want to add a widget, click this button, and you can select from some predefined categories here. You can also manage your news and interests, which takes you to a website where you can select the different news categories that you want to display in your widget screen. Once you make your changes, close that window, and they'll show up on your widgets. Each one of the individual widgets can be edited by clicking the dot 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 in the upper right corner. Here you can change the size of the widget, small, medium, or large, and you can drag and drop these widgets around wherever you want them to be on your widget screen. Want to remove one? Just choose Remove Widget from the menu. You will need access to the internet for these widgets to work correctly because they're pulling data from the internet to display on your widget screen. Widgets also are able to be slid from the left if you have a portable display device. And if you want the widgets to be removed, you can right click on it and hide it from the taskbar. To bring it back, just right click on the taskbar, go to taskbar settings, scroll down to taskbar, and make sure this is turned on for widgets. The search has changed in Windows 11. If you come down here to the magnifying glass and hover over it, you can see your recent searches and you can pick one from the list. If you click on the magnifying glass, it opens up the search window where you can type a search just like you did in Windows 10. And it will search all of these different types of objects, including this list under more. Or you can choose one to search for just that type of object. The top apps are listed here so you can quickly access them and your recent accessed searches are listed here. There are some additional searches for the web for different topics, and you have a menu where you change some of your indexing or some of the settings for searching. You can also access this same search from the Start menu. Come down here, click on the Start menu. When you click on the search, it automatically brings you back to that same search window. So there's two methods to get at the search option. One of the major overhauls in Windows 11 is a rebuild of the Microsoft Store. 
Microsoft recognizes that there's been limitations in the past and some of the apps have suffered as a result of that. I click on the Start menu and type in Store. You can bring up the Microsoft Store app and you'll see a completely different interface here. And on the left, there's options here for apps, gaming, and entertainment. Even under the app section, you'll see that Microsoft 365 has been added to the list of apps, which was previously not available there. When you click on an individual app to do an install, you'll see a variety of information available here, much more descriptive than the previous Microsoft Store. And you can do the purchases directly from the App Store for download to your PC. Another major change is support for apps like TikTok, which are available for download from the Amazon Store. Microsoft has partnered with Amazon to make all of the Amazon Store apps available within the download of the Microsoft Store as well. Microsoft is now allowing developers to publish any kind of app regardless of the framework or packaging technology and no longer requires just the UWP type of app install. This is going to make many more apps available from the Microsoft Store and encourage more publishers to become part of the Microsoft ecosystem. So you can expect to see additional apps going forward. Along with the user interface redesign, the settings menus received a complete overhaul as well. If you go to the start menu, click on settings, you'll see the new layout. Over on the left, you have the menu options, and then on the right, you have submenus where you can click and go into the detailed settings. If we come down here to advanced display, you'll see that it keeps track of the menu path and you can click backwards to any one of these to go upwards in the menu. You can also do a search and it brings up choices in the list that you can pick from. When you select one, it takes you directly to that path. It also brings up things that are not in the menu. For example, the control panel is still existing in Windows 11 and you can click on that and it opens up the separate control panel window. So it makes it easy to get to any settings, whether they're in the menu or outside. Overall, I think this redesign is a nice clean menu structure and it's easier to navigate. A new addition to Windows 11 is Microsoft Teams. You can access it by clicking on this chat icon down here on the taskbar or by hitting the Windows C buttons to open up the chat window. Here you can chat with other people that are on Microsoft Teams, and even if they don't have Teams currently, you can put in an email address or phone number and send them an invite, and it'll offer them the option to download and install the Teams client so that you can communicate. This allows you to do chat communications as well as video calls. It's not intended to be the full version of Microsoft Teams like the client you would have in a business environment, but Microsoft intends to add additional features to this over time, and by the time Windows 11 is released in full version, I'm sure there'll be additional features available. The minimum requirements to run Windows 11 have created frustration with users. You can expect that any computer older than about four years will not work. The minimum requirements are 1 GHz processor with two or more cores, 64-bit processor, 4 GB of RAM, 64 GB of storage, DirectX 12 or newer graphics card, UEFI firmware, TPM or Trusted Platform Module version 2.0, 720p display with 8 bits per color channel and a 9-inch minimum size, and an internet connection. Most of these requirements are not surprising, but two of them are creating difficulty for users with older PCs. The BIOS firmware has been replaced with UEFI on newer computers, and if you don't have UEFI, you can't install Windows 11. Microsoft is also focused on enhanced security with Windows 11 and is requiring the installation of TPM 2.0. TPM is enabled in the UEFI, but only if you have a hardware module for it. Most older computers don't have that module, and adding the module is not easy or cheap. Most people will just opt to purchase a new computer. Particularly frustrating is that I can run Windows 11 with the Insider Preview build on my computer, even without the TPM 2.0 installed. But this message shows up telling me Windows 11 won't work in the general release. So this requirement is not really a limitation of your PC, but simply a security requirement Microsoft is choosing to enforce. It will be interesting to see if the backlash from users will cause Microsoft to rethink this requirement.
To check your PC to see if it's capable of running Windows 11 or for other Windows 11 news, you can come to this link on the Microsoft.com website. I'll put this link in the description below the video as well. If you scroll down most of the way on this site, you'll find this option here to check for compatibility. Now this is currently showing coming soon because Microsoft removed this PC Health Check app in order to make some modifications. And let's hope those are to make it easier for people to upgrade their PCs, like removing the TPM requirement. But we'll see what happens. I'm sure this link will be available prior to the release of Windows 11, and you'll be able to check your system here. You can also see all of the minimum requirements, so any updates to that will show up here as well. So what is the release date for Windows 11? Well, at this point, there isn't a specific date, but some of the internal Microsoft documentation that's been sent to vendors shows a potential date around October or at latest November of 2021. If you scroll up from your check for compatibility on this website, there is an option here to sign up to stay up to date with what's new, and it will give you the Windows 11 release date and more information when it becomes available. The good news is Windows 11 will be a free upgrade for any users of a current version of Windows 10, and Windows 10 will still be supported for many years to follow. So if your PC is not capable of running Windows 11 right now, you can stay with Windows 10 and then upgrade to Windows 11 sometime down the road. Hey, if you want to see more videos like this one, please subscribe. And if you've enjoyed this video, be sure to click the thumbs up and leave a comment. I really do appreciate your support.